We are fast approaching press time for the first edition of tomorrow morning's paper. This printer has just finished makeup of a page. In the next 56 minutes, all pages must be finished and recorded to meet the edition deadline of 9 p.m. But tonight's deadline is special. This New York Times mirror image in lead of tomorrow's dateline reads backwards as Sunday, July 2nd, 1978. It marks the last day of an age-old method of printing in this composing room. What you are now witnessing will exist after tonight only as a filmed historic record. For the century of the linotype machine is nearing its end. Using 535 degree molten lead, it sets solid lines of type called hot type, cast in newspaper column widths. Now cooled, a printer's hands prepare the lines for insertion into a column of the page. Headlines are still set by hand with types stored in traditional California cases and in time-worn Ludlow cabinets. By morning, relics of the past. Letter by letter, the printer forms the words in his composing stick in the same way that Gutenberg the first printer of the Western world did more than five centuries ago. Brass molds of letters are assembled in a different composing stick, also for headlines. Inside this Ludlow machine, which was invented a quarter of a century after the linotype, they will be cast from liquid lead to form a solid slug of type. By tomorrow, this Ludlow II will be a museum piece. These steel tables for page makeup are called printer's stones. They have been gradually abandoned over the past months. A radical changeover has taken place for a new era of computerized, electronic, automated, and cold type photo technology has begun. It started in the brightly lit area beyond these two dark hulks of discarded linotype machines. Now lined up for shipment, they have been the old reliables here for decades. Tonight, 60 of the once 140 linotypes, the largest battery of any newspaper in the world, are on their final stint. Before the rush to edition time, a makeup man spoke to us about this machine. You know, 100 years ago, a man named Otmar Mergenthaler invented a machine called the linotype well known by most people. But I find that uh, it was the automation of its day. The only thing is, I think it was the machine that made mass education possible. It brought the price of books within the range of the average working person. This is the machine over here, and it's practically unchanged in 100 years. I feel if old man Mergenthaler came back, he could probably go over to that machine, sit down and set up a couple of galleys of type without any problems at all. If there were any problems as far as fixing the machine, I'm sure he could get up and fix it. But that's how long that machine has lasted, a hundred years. begins with this machine. Really, three machines in one. Assembly, casting, and redistribution. In this portion of the machine, we keep these brass mattresses, which have a letter punched into their edge. In this case, the letter M. When I press a key, these mattresses will fall along this gravity chute and into the assembler. If I press this M, you'll see that M come down. There it is. Now when I want to space a word, I'll drop in a space band, which is a steel wedge. It slides up and down and spreads the line to the exact size that I want in a column, so that every line is exactly equal to the other in width. <coughs> when we send a line into the casting machine, this is what happens. 
If we take these mattresses, they'll come down and face against this steel mold. Hot metal, molten lead will be poured into that steel mold. This mattress will be faced against here with the mold of the mattress against the top. The lead will harden and pick up the image from the inside of this mold and this mattress. It will turn around through here, it will harden, it will be trimmed, and it will be ejected right here. Now let's watch a line go in. This one's just about ready. It's going across now. The bands are spreading the line out now. It's, the line is being pumped in. The hot lead is hardening now. It's being trimmed. And here's your new line of type. But the real machine is in the back. It was a watchmaker who invented it. This uniquely shaped eccentric cam is the heart of his entire system. As it rotates, it programs all the intricate operations of this automatic producer of type for the composing of the paper. It makes the linotype machine run like a huge wound up clock, ticking with perfect precision. In the meantime, these mattresses have been redistributed and transferred into those magazines and we can use them again and again. This story is about finished now. We can take it over to the bank, get a galley proof, send it into the proof room for proofreading, and when we're finished with that, we'll take the type and put it either on a correction bank or maybe directly into the page and wait for the corrections. These latest machines, without keyboards, have built-in teletypesetter units. Instead of fingers on keys, perforated tape does the work like the old music roll in a player piano. This enables one person to monitor three machines at once. A solid bar, or pig of lead, is lowered into the melting pot to refill it for casting. Sign language is used among the paper's many deaf printers. Instead of three lines a minute, the old manual way, each machine now sets 14 lines a minute. It's as far as mechanical automation could go in the pre-electronic age. Lines of type and picture cuts are made up into full page forms, guided by editor's layout sheets. Where does this thing go? Oh, they got the wrong, that should be eight and a half. All right, look, you want to make a box out of it? Yeah, stick it up in here somewhere. Uh, are we all done here? Yeah, that was all I got. Um, you want to push it around? Or do you want to end here? We'll stick, stick the box down here. You want to make a box out of it and then yeah. turn this? Yeah. The closest it. cooperation is needed between the page editor and the makeup. I got it, I got it, I got to get it back in. Together, they almost talk the type into the page form, coax it, cajole it, to make it fit as they work against the clock. Put a line back on right, okay. Everyone is aware of the time. I know if I let this page go. Only 40 minutes are left to the 9 o'clock first edition deadline. From now on, a page a minute, 40 more pages must be completed, locked up in these page forms, and ready for the presses. Metal engravings like these are cut down to size and precisely trimmed. Cuts will print up as the drawings and photos you see in the paper every day. The handling of type and cuts is the job of the makeup man, while the page editor indicates to him what she wants. Reading the type upside down and backwards, he sees a reverse image of what will be the final printed page, and may even catch an overlooked error.
and moaning and pain. Others, you had others in there. Oh, others with an S. Yeah, they had an S. And what you do? Give it out again. That's a bad S. It's a bad S. Only 14 minutes to go. Everyone feels the urgency. Pages are nearing completion. Makeups tighten keys to bring type and cuts closely together. This keeps pieces from falling out when forms are moved off the stones. This page is about done. Right, this, one is going to say, uh, this one's going to say rescue workers milling around. milling around an ice cream truck after. And then it's going to say it exploded in lower Manhattan yesterday. Almost finished. All we need is this one. The editor sends this one on its way. The presses are waiting. Trucks, trains, and planes must be met to rush the paper to the city, to the country, and to the world. Now this one is on its way. And the last one to close is page one. On time. And now a work break, and also a party for old-time linotype operator Albert Tangway. Over 49 years uh, being a, a member of the composer room, a senior member on the priority list. The number one man on the priority list. How do you feel about this changeover, Mr. Tangway? Well, I feel, I feel that uh, they call it progress. But uh, I would like it to uh, stay the way it was, you know, keep the old, the old machine running. How long have you worked here? Uh, one short of 49 years. How old are you? 75 and a half. 75 and a half. Are you retiring tonight? Yeah. This is the last time you'll be up here? Time. No, I wonder you uh, uh, <laughs> Let's have a drink on it. I'm, I'm, glad, I'm glad I had so many good friends on it. This worker chalks up his sentiments. End of an era. Good while it lasted. Crying won't help. I find it very sad. Very sad. I, uh, I've learned the new stuff, the new processes and all, but I've been a printer now for 26 years. I've been in this place for 20 years. Six years apprenticeship, 20 years journeyman. And these are words that aren't just tossed around. They've always meant something to us printers. I hate to see it. It's inevitable that we're going to go into computers. All the knowledge I've acquired over these 26 years is all locked up in a little box now called a computer. And I think probably most jobs are going to end up the same way. I think computers are a good idea in general? Oh, I, there's no doubt about it. They're going to benefit everybody eventually. How long it will take, I don't know. Carefully. Back on the stone were changes by the news department for the second, the late city edition. A galley of new type for a late breaking story is proofed up to be read for accuracy. Corrections are checked. Lines with errors are replaced by corrected lines. Okay, I won. And page one is ready to go again for the new deadline, 11 p.m. This time we follow it to the making of a stereotype mat. The mat is a damp sheet of flexible cardboard. A solid steel roller will press it against the hundreds of separate lines and picture cuts locked together in this page form. Five minutes to the 11 o'clock deadline. The stereotyper taps down a spacing lid so that it won't print. The mat will soon be curved and dried into a half cylinder form. From it, curved, solid lead plates will be cast to fit on the rotary presses. The pressure of one ton per square inch is forced upon the cardboard. The raised lead type 
presses into the mat, forming a mold of recessed letters. The mat is now right reading and ready for casting. All right, down into the stereo casting room, three stories below street level in the Times Building. Hot lead will now pour into the recessed impressions of type in this curved mat. Casting starts. These mammoth machines are up for sale. Some will go under the hammer at auction. A few will be cannibalized for spare parts. Nine identical page plates to run on nine presses at the same time are cooled in these steel chambers before rolling into the press room. When is this operation gonna, when gonna close up? It's gonna close up in the morning. How do you feel about it? Another innovation? A new, uh, new process we're moving into. How do you feel about it? When I think of these machines costing over $100,000 a piece to be chunked, it uh, kind of leaves me loose. You know, this is as far as they could go, though, uh, as far as the automation with the hot metal. This is as far as the times could go. So how, what is it going to mean to you personally? It means I'll have to learn a new process. One after another, into the press room. Warning bells ring when the presses start up. Page one sports. These heavy plates on their snaking and crisscrossing tracks are making their final run to the nine presses tonight. Will the new technology just a few hours away make a big change down here? A pressman shrugs it off. Instead of using lead 40-pound plates and locking them up, instead of using uh, these lead plates, what we do is use a plastic plate that only weighs a few ounces, and it's, it just goes on a cylinder. There's a magnetic bar that holds it on. So you just get the hang of putting it on, that's all. The rest of the job won't change significantly. Page one, man. Cheering greets the last time that a 40-pound half-cylinder plate of lead will ever again be mounted on these presses. Scrap from the previous press run is cleared from the conveyor. They carry the finished papers up to the street level above. Now the last reversal, from wrong reading type to the final inked, right reading printed page. Presses keep rolling through the night. This is goodbye.
generations of linotype operators have often run their fingers down the first two rows of keys, releasing mats that read eight ton shrug loop. This fills out lines that start with keyboard errors. The last bad line is discarded at the end of the story. Motor off. A last touch of familiar brass mats. Light out for good. It is the end of the age of hot type mechanical printing. And the beginning of the new, the computerized cold type, the electronic. These seasoned printers, retrained, have made the transition from the old to the new. The electronic images of letters that I have just set on this video display screen I'll now send to the computer, where it is processed, stored, and brought back when required for correction. Back to the computer. When needed, a touch of a keep returns it to the editor. It is then changed to the desired column width, style, size of type, and hyphenation, followed by further keyboarding of headlines and bylines. Then to one of five photo typesetters, each an electronic mirror. Inside, a web of components and wiring does the work of 140 linotypes, generating a vast array of electronic type images on a concealed cathode ray tube. These images are contacted onto photosensitive paper at a thousand lines a minute. Emerging from the darkroom, the photosensitized paper has now been transformed by a developing machine into photographic cold type, ready for full page paste up. This productivity leap from 14 to a thousand lines a minute is made possible several floors above by a battery of computers. These units contain magnetized memory disks and electronic digital systems, which store and process all the data sent from below. Switches and buttons, at a touch, bring us into an ever-advancing world of automation, computerization, and programmed electron flow. Humidity and temperature, monitored and controlled around the clock, are critical. These cabinets hold layered packs of yellow magnetic disks and others like this. The disks, in operation, spin at 140 miles an hour. More than 8 million words can be stored and sent back by each disk pack. And cold type on paper keeps on flowing. Photo technology has conquered hot metal. The typeset paper is cut, waxed on the back for adhesion, and pasted up on full page boards on these tables. That'll bring the type down to here. It's going to be a new type here? Yes, That's right. going to go deeper? Mm-hmm. Okay. Core. Right, that's holding it. Thank you, Jim. Right. From obituaries to sports. 
to the worlds of business, entertainment, real estate, classified and display advertising, and of course, the news. These color patches will soon be replaced by headlines. They are now being cut to exact size. No more molten lead. He has made it from hot type makeup to cold type paste up. The last headline in place, ready to go. Page one will now be transferred electronically through impulses from this laser scanner machine to the plate room underground. In a moment, the laser beam within will scan the pasted up page. This will result in 14 ounce flexible plastic plates made and used down below in the press room. Page after page will be run off on the high speed rotary presses as before and folded into the finished paper. But despite automation, computerization, and the continuing advances of electronics, the central factor is still the work of the human brain, the work of human eyes, and the work of human hands. In creating that powerful element of communication, the printed word.